It's no secret that the 2020s have been rough for Pixar. Onward kicked off the decade only for the world to shut down pretty much immediately, leading to an underwhelming box office performance. Their parent company axed the theatrical releases for three of their movies, turning Red, Soul, and Luca. Their return to theaters vastly underperformed with the release of Lightyear, which also had very mixed reception. I think a lot of people thought it was all right. They got some entertainment out of it, but honestly, I think it's a stinker. When I walked out the theater, I thought it was just a okay, there were some things I liked, but the twist villain just left a horrible taste in my mouth. I've had no urge to rewatch that film since, which is something I can't say about Turning Red, Soul, or Luca. Hell, I wasn't the biggest fan of Onward, but I'd rather check that out again before Lightyear. And then there's Elemental, a movie that general audiences seemed predisposed to disliking, but once it got released, it actually had some legs, making double the amount that Lightyear did in the box office. Keep this in mind, because I'm gonna bring this back up very soon. But as a result of all of this, Pixar and really Disney as a whole, is deciding to take a bit of a step back, slow down their output a bit, while of course prioritizing sequels. A good example of this is how their original film, Elio, saw a significant delay from March of this year to June of next year, no longer being a spring release, but instead their summer blockbuster. But that doesn't mean this is going to be a silent year for Pixar, as Inside Out 2 is just around the corner. But alongside that, we have Toy Story 5 in the pipeline. We have another Incredibles in the works. And in general, sequels to their most successful properties are not going to stop anytime soon. Which again, is not something exclusive to Pixar. You see the same thing going on over at Marvel. Phase 4 and 5 had a lot of stinkers, and now they're finally rolling out The Mutants and Fantastic Four, with there being reports that they're interested in exploring new projects with the OG Avengers. It's clear Disney's kind of been in panic mode, trying to get their shit together, and now they're looking at all of their studios going, you know what, let's focus only on the nostalgia. Instead of releasing as many movies as possible, only for a majority of them to underperform and lose the money. Releasing less, but making sure the movies that you do release are gonna be money made Makers just makes sense. However, I want to reiterate that Pixar's situation is vastly different from like the MCU because again, three other movies were straight to streaming and one of them only had like two weeks to do well in the box office. And despite them being straight to streaming, Soul, Turning Red, and Luca all got a lot of praise. People adored these films. It felt like a mini renaissance with these intimate, more personal stories. Clearly, that was working for the studio, even if the circumstances of the world took away their financial gain. Now, yes, they did eventually give these movies a theatrical release a few months ago, but they didn't do anything crazy on account of these re-releases being poorly advertised, and, uh, you know, they're already available on Disney+. Plus. So with all that said, tell me why the people running over the show at Pixar are saying, no, the personal stories aren't working, the sequels and spinoffs are, even though their only real stinker of the decade has been Lightyear. In anticipation for the release of Inside Out 2, Bloomberg recently released an article pertaining to the future of Pixar, featuring an interview with Pete Docter, someone who of course has been at Pixar since the very beginning and has directed numerous films such as Monsters, Inc., Up, The First Inside Out, and Soul. Now, this interview has pissed off a lot of people because, respectfully, Doctor was talking as if he just flew in from stupid town. Just absolute nonsense. So the excerpt that everyone is going nuts over reads, After Lightyear lost millions of dollars in 2022, and Elemental had Pixar's worst ever opening weekend performance the following year, there was a real and intense period of self-scrutiny and feeling like we messed up in some way, Doctor says. Executives hosted postmortems to determine how to revitalize the studio, he recalls. They arrived at mentoring Pixar's upcoming directors to focus less on autobiographies. Luca had been inspired by his director's childhood in Italy, turning red by his director's relationship with her mother, and Elemental, which did gain some momentum overseas and online, by his director's immigrant family. Now, first off, Elemental did not just gain some momentum. Again, it made double what Lightyear did. Clearly, people enjoyed this movie, and they enjoyed it way more than Lightyear. Pixar would instead develop concepts with clear mass appeal many of which, in the case of sequels and spinoffs, had already been proven. Again, Lightyear didn't make shit compared to Elemental. Lightyear was a spinoff, a spinoff based on one of their most profitable franchises. 
The studio's movie should be less of a pursuit of any director's catharsis and instead speak to a commonality of experience, Doctor says. I don't think we can ever let ourselves off the hook of making sure that we deliver the best possible and most relatable films. Okay, so let me get this straight. You want to make the best possible and most relatable films. Yet, when people speak to their own personal experiences... That's not relatable? You're telling me the talking cars is where it's at. Yep, I'm not buying that at all. It's just nonsensical to mention that Lightyear lost millions, only for Pixar to turn around and say, we need more light years in this world, less turning reds and Lucas. Even though again, they weren't in theaters. They never had a chance to make money. So how are you gonna point to them and say, oh, less of those? Those aren't what people are looking for. Yet they performed well on Disney Plus, so clearly they did. Now this interview pissed off both people in the industry and consumers alike. Data Terrace, the creator of The Owl House, tweeting, There's something very disgusting about telling directors, writers, and artists their experiences and inspirations aren't appealing enough for the masses. And I completely agree! It's clear their priorities lie in appeasing stockholders and making sure the line goes up, even though the best way to ensure that is just by making good movies. Not just sequels, not just familiar characters, but films people enjoy. I just think Disney as a whole has been humbled over the last few years because people will no longer flock in droves to see anything with their name slapped on it. But again, it just feels very nonsensical to point at the films that didn't have a chance to make money and say, yeah, you're the problem. No one can relate to you. Even though their relatability is a huge reason why these movies were so adored. Now, I think there are relatable aspects to most of Pixar's library, including the money makers they want to pump out sequels to. I don't want to undermine any of them. But it just boggles my mind that they can look at a film like Turning Red, which is largely about puberty, something everyone goes through, and have the balls to claim the mass appeal isn't there. Even if it is centered more on the female experience, that's still half of the population! Sorry, this only appeals to 4 billion people. It's just not the audience we're looking for. Like, nigga what? Do you hear yourself? And I think they also singled out Luca because that movie is very clearly a gay allegory. So it's very easy for them to say it's not going to appeal to everyone. Elemental, as this article says, is about the director's immigrant family. It's so obvious why they singled these movies out instead of Soul or Onward even though those stories feel just as personal and intimate as the rest of these. Soul is a very existential film. It's about mortality and living your life to the fullest. But it's about a black New Yorker who's a high school band teacher, dissatisfied with the direction his life is heading in, and is determined to achieve his dream career. That's clearly an inspired choice. I don't think Joe is necessarily the most relatable character to kids, but he is definitely relatable to adults. Yet they're not gonna say Soul doesn't have clear mass appeal because then people are gonna start giving them the side eye like what do you mean by that or looking at onward that movie's target audience is very clearly people who have dealt with the loss of a family member specifically a parent at a young age or people who are too young to remember what their deceased parent is even like it also was very clearly pandering to D&D nerds yet they're not gonna say that doesn't have mass appeal despite the fact it's about fucking elves when it stars a Guardian of the Galaxy and Spider-Man who were in our most profitable film ever show, everyone's gonna want to bring their friends and family to that. It's just very clear they're saying the quiet part out loud. Disney as a whole lacks direction right now. They are very lost. And it feels like Doctor's words in this interview were planted by the parent company, Disney, who as a whole has clearly been folding to the anti-woke crowd and are now saying the quiet part out loud, making it clear that they come to the conclusion that minorities are not marketable. After years of shamelessly going, oh look, our first gay character, no wait, that's our first gay character, actually that's our first gay character, please give us money, gay people. Guys, we're so inclusive, give us money. Oh wait, the spin-off starring one of our Avengers didn't make a billion dollars? This is the minority's fault, damn it! Curse those Italians! We need to fast track 15 more Toy Stories in an incredible sequel. And don't get me wrong, I'm gonna watch as many Incredibles as they make. I'm probably gonna watch Toy Story 5. The sequels aren't really the problem here. The problem is why they're making them and why they're making less of the unique films that people clearly want to see. 
I feel like this interview would make way more sense if turning red, Luca, and Elemental had poor critical reception, but they don't! People like them! The critics enjoyed these films, and the general audiences enjoyed these films. They just had to enjoy two of them from the comfort of their own home. And the third gained traction thanks to the word of mouth. You know, that thing that happens when people really like a movie and tell their friends about it so more people go see it because they know it's good? The thing that didn't happen with Lightyear because that movie is some Midorodian cheese? We're already in some pretty dark times for the animation industry, but this entire interview just bummed me out. It pissed me off. It's hypocritical. There's so many holes in this logic, and it just feels like a poor excuse for them to say the quiet part out loud. I don't have any ill will towards the sequels they are cooking up. I hope Inside Out 2 is good. I love the first one. I hope Toy Story 5 is good, even if I was really mixed on 4. And obviously, I want Incredibles 3 to be good. But I am really hoping that next year, when Elio rolls around, the movie is well-received and makes gangbusters just so Pixar feels a little goofy and goes, you know what? Maybe we were wildin' when it comes to our original ideas. Maybe there is a place for both and not just sequels and spin-offs because, you know, there is? Yeah, that's really about it for this Yap session. I just needed to pop off about this. Nothing about it tracks are just trying to make their stockholders happy. And if anything, I think it's gonna bite them in the ass by alienating a good chunk of their audience. Those who Pixar turned to and said, you know what? You guys aren't marketable. We can't make money off of you. Back to the toys. But that's really about it. Drop your thoughts on this tomfoolery in the comments down below, and keep the conversation going over at Austrick Vox and at Roundtable Vids. If you enjoyed this video, please sure to like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.